In today's lesson, we'll be learning about and practicing modeling percents, meeting the requirements for TEKS 64E and 64F. These are the two models we'll be using to model percents. At the top of the page is what we call a 10 by 10 grid. I think you should already be familiar with these. This grid is one large square broken down into 100 smaller squares. 10 squares across, 10 squares going up and down. 100 total squares, which is important because you'll remember that percent means of 100. So that if I said, how could you use a 10 by 10 grid to model 12%? 12%. How could you model 12% using this grid? Well, what if I shaded 12 squares? If I shaded 12 squares, how many squares would be shaded? 12. Of how many squares are there in the entire grid? Well, 100. So 12 of 100. And 12 of 100 is exactly the same value as 12%. Percent means of 100. The next tool that we use is oftentimes called a bar diagram or a strip diagram, but we will refer to it as a percent bar. This bar is used to represent percents. In this case, we're representing the one entire thing, 100%. So if I said I want you to model 50%, Using this bar, show me what 50% would look like. If you said, well, I would just cut the bar in half. I know if I cut the bar in half and shade this portion, I've now shaded one half of the bar. And one half of 100% is 50%. Which means the other portion of the bar that's not shaded is the other half, which is also valued at 50%. 50% and 50% give me 100%. Just like one half and one half give me one whole. We'll be using these two tools in this lesson in order to model percents. Here's a picture of a 10 by 10 grid. Can you tell me what percent is modeled in this picture? Well, did you remember that a 10 by 10 grid has 100 total squares? 10 rows by 10 columns means 100 squares, which is very useful because we know that a percent is of 100. So of the 100 squares, how many of them are shaded? All you need to do is count. And if you were to count the 10 in this column, the 10 in this column, the 10 in the third column, and then the 6 remaining, you would realize there were 36 squares that were shaded. 36 of 100 squares are shaded. 36 of 100 is exactly the same value as 36%. 36% of the squares are shaded. Here's another 10 by 10 grid. A 10 by 10 grid has 100 squares, which is awesome because percent is of 100. If I look at the green squares, what percent am I modeling? What percent of the squares are in green? You could simply count them. If you counted all of the squares in green, you would find that all of these green squares make a total of 36 squares. 36 of all of the squares, 36 of the 100 squares, are shaded green. Green represents 36% of the squares. 
So here's a blank 10 by 10 grid. If I said shade 17%, I want to know how you would model 17%. Well, if you remember that a percent is of 100, how many of these squares would you need to shade to show 17%? And if you said, well, I would need to shade 17 of the 100 squares to show 17%, you'd be absolutely right. And so, do you need to shade these 17? No. You could shade any 17 squares in this grid, and it would be 17%. 17 of the 100 squares are shaded. 17%. The next tool that we sometimes use to model percents is the percent bar. This bar represents 100%, the whole thing. And I can represent a percent by cutting up the bar. Just like I broke the big square into 100 little squares, I can cut this bar into pieces as well. For example, if I cut the bar in half, what percent have I now modeled here in black? If you said that's a model of 50%, that's awesome. If you recognize, wait a minute, when you cut it in half and shaded this half in black, right, you know that one half of 100 is 50. So 50% 50 and one half are equivalent values. They're the same value, just written in different forms. One is a fraction, one is a percent. The percent bar can be used to model percents, and it is most likely what we will use in class. If I tell you that each bar represents 100%, it's the whole bar. One whole bar is 100% of the bar. So if I cut it in half, we know I've got 50% on each half. If I cut it into four pieces, I know that each piece is one-fourth. And that one-fourth, or one-quarter, is 25%. All four added together would give me my 100%. The same would be true no matter how many pieces I cut this into. So that if I cut it into, say, 10 pieces, each piece would be worth 10%. Each would be valued the same. All 10 of them would give you 100%. But if I only shaded these three, what percent am I now modeling? I have 10 pieces. Each piece represents 10%. Three of them have been shaded. So this represents 30%. Three times the 10% for each piece. Here's a percent bar. And I've cut it into five pieces. If the entire bar is 100%, what's the percent for each of the five pieces? If I have 100% and I cut it into five pieces, haven't I divided the 100 by 5? Haven't I said, hey, 100% divided into five parts means that each part is going to be 20%. 20%. So that means I have 20% here, 
20% here, 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 and here. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 percent. So when I divide a percent bar into a number of pieces, if I want to know the value of each piece, then I should divide the 100 percent by the number of pieces that are in that bar. Here's a percent bar. The whole thing is, of course, 100%. I've cut it into four pieces. I've shaded three of them. What percent of the bar has been shaded? Well, remember what I said earlier. To find the value of each piece, Divide the 100% by the number of pieces in the bar. There are four pieces in this bar. One, two, three, four. When I divide 100 by 4, I get 25. So each piece is 25%. How many of them are shaded? One, two, three. What's 25 times 3? So, 75% of the bar is shaded. This represents 75%. Well, what if I said, here's a bar. The entire thing is 100%. I want you to represent 80%. 80%. So, what would 80% of this bar shaded look like? So think about this. 80 is a multiple of what? There's a very important number right here. This 0 automatically means it's a multiple of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Because the 8 is an even number, it also means they can be divided by 2, which means this number is also a multiple of 20. 20, 40, 60, 80. So I have a couple of choices. I can either divide my bar so that each piece is 10% or that each piece is 20%. If each piece were 10%, how many pieces would I need to have? If you said 10, you'd be right. If I have a piece that's worth 10%, I need 10 of them to make 100. There's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 80% means I need to shade how many of these? I need to shade 8 of them. 8 bars, each worth 10%, shows that I've now represented 80% of this entire percent bar. Because these two pieces... 10% each represent the other 20%. I have 20% down here, not shaded. 80% shaded. The entire bar is 100%. Let's go ahead and wrap up this lesson. You'll remember we used a 10 by 10 grid and a percent bar to model percents. On the grid, the 100 squares really helped us out because of 100 means percent. So just count the shaded portion or shade in some portion, and that's your percent. On the percent bar, we could cut the bar into pieces, knowing that each piece being the same size would represent a percent. And in this example here, I've cut it into four pieces. Each one is 25%, which gives me four pieces of 25% is 100%. Just like four one-fourths or four-fourths gives me one whole thing. 